So today we are going to be sewing the Jupiter clutch. I just want to give you a quick video of what you're going to be sewing. So you've got this lovely shaped flap with a snap here and here. I don't know if you can see with this print, but I've got six card slots here. Inside, there is a zipper pocket. And on the back, there's a roomy accordion pocket under the flap. There are two ways to do the wristlet connector. I've used these in my pattern, but I've also done a quick how-to on using the connector tabs. At the end of your video, you'll find a quick how-to on how to add the half moon snap. Look at page 19 in the instructions and that'll tell you which numbers you need to miss out on, the, on um, adding the snap which numbers to skip over for this one. Happy sewing! Can't wait to see what you make. Let's get straight into it and we're going to make our card slots. So on the wrong side of your card slots fabric piece, you're going to transfer the markings over. As you can see, I've already done them. I've also marked where the top is. I've done this on the right side as well. Now what I'm going to do is mix just small little snips in the seam allowance. Feel free to fast forward. This will help loads with the folding. I find it so much easier than just leaving the lines. Because at least this way you can see what you're doing on both sides. There we go, little stop. What I'm also going to do is on the right side I'm going to within the if you can obviously if your fabric allows I'm going to write the odd numbers one two three four five and on the wrong side I'm going to write the even numbers Don't panic, this will all become clear. So at number one, on the one side, you're going to take the bottom and you're going to fold it at the number one line. And then you're going to give it a press. So at the number two, it's upside down over there, you're going to bring the top, the bottom, back down, folding it at the number two line. And then give it a press. You want to make sure that these edges, these little edges of the snip, match up because that will really help you get a nice straight line. So at number three, we're going to take the bottom again, fold it at the number three, give it a press. Number four, number five, and number six. All folded, give it a nice, really good press. Now, what we need to do now is top stitch along the tops of each of these folds. So, to do that, I'm going to fold this bit backwards. If you've given it a really good press, it should stay where it is. So, I'm just going to top stitch. And then 
finally fold it all back to this one. Right, so you want to refold them. And then I'm going to baste stitch down each side edge within the seam allowance just to keep all the folds in place. Now when I'm doing it I like to always start from the top so on this side I'll start from the, the top on the right side and then I'll flip it over and I'll sew from the top down on this side. And there we have your card slots. Now to do the centre, you want to have a centre line. Ooh, ding ding. I'm going to measure. Now I know these are eight and a quarter inch. So you're only going to draw as far as the bottom of the card slot so you can just about feel that there I'm going to sew on top of this line I'm going to back stitch at the top but I'm not going to back stitch at the bottom I'm going to leave a long tail on the thread On the wrong side, let's just get these ones out of the way. I'm going to take my thread from the wrong side and I'm going to gently pull it upwards Ooh, where are you? until a little loop starts to appear. And you want to use something that's not going to cut the thread to pull on that little loop. You see, this one's disappearing. You're bringing the thread from the right side through to the wrong side. I'm just going to knot these together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fill it. And I'm just going to iron over that quickly to get rid of my pen. Right. So after folding your card slots, you might find that it's slightly too tall. So I've just used my pattern piece. I popped it over and I've trimmed it from the top side. Right. I've got my side pieces, left and a right. You want to make sure that this ed long edge is matched together. Obviously, if they were like that, you could tell that they wouldn't match. Match them up. I'm going to flip this so it's right side to the card slots. Same with this one. So I'm going to stitch them together using a regular seam allowance, but because I'm using faux leather, I'm just going to use a slightly longer stitch. So 
So if you were using all cotton or linen or just a fabric you can iron, you could press these outwards, but I can't. So I'm just going to press it with my fingers the best I, not best I can. And then I'm going to top stitch with all the seams facing outwards down the side of the sides. Now, if you wish, you could add a second row of top stitching on the outsides again. So one there and one there. That is your front piece finished for now. We'll come back to add the snap-on after we've added the foam. So now we'll move on to the back. On the back... We're going to start with these accordion pieces. So I've got two up there and two here on the wrong side. Now, if you are using two different fabrics, then I suggest you draw on both of one kind. Right. And I would also suggest that you draw these lines opposite ways. Where's my ruler? Now to start off down one of the long sides, I'm going to draw a half inch line. And I will make this the opposite on the other side. This is going to be your sewing line. This is just to make sure that they're both even, you get the points nice and right, and to be honest, there's no shame in drawing a line to follow. I'm going to do this at the seam allowance, so this is three eighths of an inch. Feel free to fast forward me. Now I'm not going to do this line, so I'm going to put some X's to say no sewing. So on this side it'll be this one, no sewing. Now I'm just going to go ahead and draw these other lines, okay? There we go. That's a real handy thing about using a quilter ruler because it has all the marks on that you need. I'm going to match these up right sides together. Oops. I'm going to sew on top of 
have my drawn line not sewing the excess so on both sides so on top using a regular stitch length This is where we need to trim some bulk. So I'm going to take a V out of the top, as close to the stitches as I feel comfortable with, because you don't want to snip through them. I'm going to take this corner off, this corner off, and I'm going to cut another V. Same again. There we go. So I've trimmed some bulk. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these inside out. Now I'm going to give them a good press. There we go. I've given them a press. Now I'm going to top stitch all around the outsides. It's up to you. You can top stitch the raw edge if you like, but you don't need to. Right, so now you want to lay them so that the raw edges are on the opposite edges, opposite sides, on the outsides. Now if you've used two different fabrics, this is where you, the fabric you want to see on the accordion is going to be on the top. And if you've used the lining, you want this on the bottom now. Now you can mark or pin, I find just pins easier, the top point. just find it so much easier to fold doing this. And the bottom point. And the same on this one. Top point and the bottom. I'm going to fold towards the right edge. And the pin is going to be my centre fold. Clip those in place. Oh my gosh, where would we be without clips? I'm going to remove those pins now. So again, with the pins being the centre fold, or if you've marked it, just keep an eye on that. I'm going to fold these towards the raw edges towards but not to the raw edge and move the pin so you have two opposites two opposite accordion pieces so if you had your line in this would be your line in this would be the fabric you want to see lining fabric you want to see but I've used them both the same just to make it simpler. Now I'm going to top stitch down here. Now this might can be a, like a weak point for some, so if you want to add two rows of top stitching, feel free. I'm just going to add the one. Use a regular stitch length. don't really need any strength to these folds it's they're there literally just to keep the folds in place 
which is why one row of stitching is fine but if you had something quite thick that might put a lot of strain on the, the seam you might want another another row so still keeping them opposite I'm just going to push them up there for a second I'm going to take my sorry little wobble on my back piece now I'm going to measure up one and three quarter inches or five four point five centimeters on both sides Ooh, I don't know, cut that straight anyway. one and three quarter inches within the seam allowance I'm going to take my left one and I'm going to pop it on the left side, matching the bottom up to the line. And I'm going to clip it in place. I am using a lot of clips because of the fact that I'm using faux leather and I can't pin it. And also because they're super fast. Right, so I'm going to do the same to the right one. So they're matched up to the bottom lines and as you can see my fold is on the top. And then I'm going to baste stitch these in place. Right, let's do this. That's right, I'm a real stickler for threads. Right, so with them, so obviously I'm just fiddling around, make sure that you've got the bigger part at the top, the smaller part at the bottom. And we're going to come back in again with our side pieces. So as we did on the front, match up the straight sides. You might want to move this out of the way. So you've got this one on top because you don't want to sew through that as well. Now, same again as with the front, I'm going to sew them together using your regular seam allowance on both sides. same again push all the seams facing outwards I'm going to top stitch this in place now if you want you can add a second row of top stitching on the outsides of your first row but otherwise we are ready to foam so I'm just going to move my machine out of the way it's dusty. you're going to lay your front and your back piece on top of the foam panel I've already cut mine because I can't fit it on the table. So I've got my front and my back one and I've cut round it. When it comes to the flap foam, you're going to fold back 
your pattern piece up the dash line before cutting it because this is bulk it's unnecessary bulk that we don't need on the back of the clutch right so i'm just going to clip these in place watch me do this super fast with the foam on the flap you're going to use your outer your accent fabric for the outside and you'll notice as i said with the cut off because this is just unnecessary bulk that we don't need so when you're placing your foam just make sure it's at the top end and it matches up all the corners Obviously, if you are choosing fleece for your clutch, you just want to go ahead and fuse your fleece to the wrong side, nice and easy. Remembering with the flap to match up the points that leave this bit bare. Now you'll notice I haven't pinned the corners because I want to trim some of this bulk out of the seam allowance. So I'm just going to fold this back and trim a corner off. You want to make sure that you're you're cutting enough away that when it comes to doing the seam, sewing the seam, you won't have all the foam. Don't panic if you trim too much away. Now I'm also going to cut away from these bottom corners because we don't need all that there as well. Trimmed away some bulk. When it comes to trimming the bulk from the flap, you can trim, don't worry about this one because that's not really a corner, but trim that one, these ones, don't worry about this one down here, because that's not a corner. Right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to base stitch the fabrics to the foam using around about a quarter inch seam allowance. Doesn't matter really what your seam allowance is, but try and keep it within within the seam allowance obviously some people like to zigzag it then obviously you don't trim anything away some people like to base stitch it in then when it comes to construction they trim away the foam i personally haven't got the patience for that so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna use a long stitch length i'm gonna base mine to my foam using a quarter inch seam allowance or thereabouts Right, now I've basted them all to the foam. I now need to remove the excess. So I'm using a not pointy pair of scissors. These are my good ones. And I find that they stick in the foam. So I'm just gonna literally lift, using my left hand, lift up the foam. And I'm gonna trim away the excess. So there we have it. Right, so I've trimmed the foam from all the seam allowances. And I'm just going to put these to the side for a second. And I'm going to take my flap lining piece and I'm going to fold it in half, wrong sides together. 
and sometimes you can give it a little finger press on the end and the fold will stay in place if it doesn't don't worry I'm going to measure one and a quarter inch so one and a quarter inch or three centimeters up on that fold on the fold line. This is the centre of the washer. This is one of my washers for my magnetic snap. So I've got two pieces to the snap. One's got a little knobby bit and one's got an indent. I'm going to use the thinner knobby bit for today. For today? For this part. So put your washer over the hole and I'm going to mark where the prongs are going to go so using your seam ripper you're going to carefully cut the holes for your prongs now there are lots of brands of this this is just for a stopper, for a check, as many different names. I'm just going to put a little dab on each of your cut marks. Push the prongs through and flip it over. You can either use a spare scrap of foam from when you cut the body parts. Or if you have any of this lying around, Decavel, Paltex, just as good. I like to keep all of my scraps. So I'm going to put the washer on here. Make the prong marks. This adds a bit of stability because it's very easy for that to pull through the fabric and rip it. And that is not what you want. I'm going to push that over the prongs, put on my washer, and I'm going to bend these to the outsides. You can add a little tape, but because it's being against the foam, it's not going to damage any of this. So it's up to you. You can add tape to it if you want but you don't need to. Now, what I'm also going to do, and there is absolutely no shame in this, I'm going to draw on my three quarter inch stitch line because I like having nice sharp points and having them pretty even on both sides. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Right, there we go. I've drawn on my stitch line so that I know where I need to stop my needle to start the next line. So obviously I'm not going to draw where I've gone over. I'm just going to draw so to the points. So lay these, your flat pieces, right sides together. And then I'm going to clip these together and I'm going to sew on top of my line using regular stitch leg. Right, so I've done my stitching on top of the line and I'm just going to trim away some of the bulk. Okay. So I now need to turn this inside out and give it a really good press. Be careful when you're pressing that you don't iron over your magnetic snap because you'll demagnetise it. Right, be right back. 
right so I've turned it inside out I've used my pencil again on the points so I've got nice sharp corners and I've given it a really good press on both sides now I'm going to take my back piece and I'm going to lay it wrong side down like this and I'm going to centre it but don't worry about it being perfect right now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the right wing and I'm going to line it up with the side edge of the flap still trying to keep this raw edge of the bottom of the flap in line with the bottom of the back and I'm just going to clip those together so you can see now my flap is attached to the cordon piece and I'm going to do the same on this side so you see I've accidentally moved mine up a little bit there we go Right, so what I'm going to do now is carefully folding these out the way. I'm now going to top stitch all the way around the outside of my flap. Do it whichever way you prefer. So I think I'm going to do mine with this way up and I'm going to fold this part back. If you find you're worried about the top stitching on the other side, you could do it this way. It's just a little bulkier, that's all. But do it whichever way you feel comfortable. Right, so we are going to add some strength to this now. So if you wish, you can add a rivet. Probably anywhere around, well, anywhere around here, wherever you're happy. Or you can add a second row of stitching. I'm going to go for a second row of stitching today. So I'm going to top stitch just in inside using my first line of stitching as a guide. Right, so I've done two rows of stitching. Now I'm going to centre up my flap on the bottom. Throw in them. And I'm going to base stitch it in place within the seam allowance. There they are. Right, now to stop things falling out the bottom we're going to do a row of stitching across here. So I need to measure 
one and a half inches up from the bottom. So we're using centimetres, that is four centimetres. So one and a half inches. Now to make this neat, we're going to do what we did with the divider on the card slot. So this time we're going to leave a long tail at the beginning and at the end so that we can knot them behind. I'm going to have a long tail on my thread to start with. And I'm going to use a regular seam allowance, uh, regular stitch length, sewing on top of the line. Right, so I'm going to leave a long tail. I'm going to very carefully, because I've got faux leather, I'm just going to carefully iron away my pen line. So on the wrong side, I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to put it back on itself until I see that loop. There it is. And the same with this one. Pull it back towards your stitches till you see the loop. There we go. And tie them up. There we go. And now we have our accordion done. That's the back then. I am just going to do the magnetic snap on the front pocket. Then we can move on to the lining. So this time I will use duct tape. So with my washer, I'm going to find bottom of my card slot and I'm going to put my washer, the top of my washer up against it. The centre is going to be in line with your row of stitching. If you need to use your ruler to carry on that line, by all means do, do whatever you need to help you. So I'm going to line that up and I'm going to draw on my prong holes. Seam ripper again, carefully cut these out, sometimes the end likes to burn up, there we go. Now I'm using the remaining half of my snap, push up the reel. Now as we've got foam on this side already, we don't really need anything else. So I'm going to put my washer on and bend the prongs outwards. Now this time we're not having foam on our opposite piece. So I'm going to cover cover the prongs with a piece of duct tape. This is so the prongs don't scratch the lining or anything else in your bag. So obviously with the flap, the prongs, I can't feel that because of the foam. But where the lining will be on, it needs protecting. So there we go. That's our front and our back done. So now we can move on to the lining. Right, let's start on the lining. So I'm going to take my 
two zipper pocket pieces and on the wrong side I'm going to mark up one inch or one inch or two and a half centimeters from the bottom of both pieces so this will be on one of your long sides so if you're using directional fabric make it the bottom i'm not so i'll just pick one long side now you're going to press the bottom raw edge up to meet this line and you're going to do this with both of them right so I've pressed the bottom raw edge up to meet the line my lines disappeared because I've used erasable fabric marker but I've pressed that to get a nice this will help when you're turning through with stitching the pocket up. I'm just gonna pick one and from the top down, I'm gonna draw a line across. That's three quarters of an inch down from the top. Now I'm gonna draw a line below that three eighths of an inch or one centimeter whichever you're using so we've just got two lines at the minute so we're going to make a box so i'm going to connect them up by drawing a little line three quarters of an inch in from the side and the same on the other side. There we go. So when we're stitching, we're just going to stitch on top of this line, but the box shape. We're not going to stitch any of these extra lines that we've drawn on. Uh -uh. Take one of your lining pieces, and this is where I find the cotton ruler really handy again. Ooh, crikey. We're going to place it three quarters of an inch down from the top and centered in from the sides. So I've laid my quilting ruler. So that each side matches one of the inch marks but if you don't have one you can fold this one in half to get the center line fold this one in half to get the center line and match them up and you want that to be three quarters of an inch down that's another good pin I'm just going to hold this in place and I'm going to stitch on top using a regular stitch length on top of the line of the box shape.
There we go. Right inside our box, I'm going to draw some more lines. This is just to help us with cutting. They don't have to be spot on. So I'm going to draw a line halfway along the center. As you can see, mine's a bit wonky donkey. Then roughly half inch in from either side. I'm going to draw lines that extend to the corners. Is that a triangle? So we're going to be snipping these lines and then the connecting line. I'm not going to use my sharpest scissors for these ones because I find they get too close to the stitches. So I'm going to fold it in half to start with to get my first cut. I'm going to cut two with a marker and then I'm going to cut into the corners. Cut as close as you can without jeopardising any of the stitches. And the same with that one. Now to give it a nice edge, I'm going to press this up first. And then I'm going to press this bit down. And I'm going to press the sides in as well. Right. right, so I've given it a press both sides, I rolled it between my fingers to get a nice edge and I've pressed it both sides now. So now we need our zipper. Now mine is a bit too long, not to worry, I haven't cut mine down. Now if you need to add tape, turn them the right way. I would suggest adding double-sided tape to the edges of this side rather than adding it to the zipper. So I've seen it done before, people have added it to the zipper, they've put that on and you can see the tape. You can pin it if you like, it's all completely up to you how you do this. But you want to make sure that the zipper, well, for starters, it's right way up. It's centred within the hole from top and bottom and that your zipper pull is on the left. If you are left handed, you might feel more comfortable with it on the right. But I would say the majority of bags you will find that the zipper is on the left. So now what I'm going to do, I don't normally use any tape. I'm going to top stitch around the outside of the box using a regular stitch length to secure this to the zipper. Right, there we go. 
so I've sewn my zipper to my lining piece now I've used zipper tape but obviously yours won't hang out this long but I didn't trim my nose now as I've cut the tape and we all know zipper tape loves to fray I'm gonna just add a little fray stopper to the ends of my tape Right. I'm just going to leave that to dry a second. Right. Given that a minute to dry. So I'm going to take my remaining pocket piece with the fold at the bottom. I'm going to lay it right side together with the other pocket piece. I'm going to sew these together using regular seam allowance and regular stitch length. I'm not going to sew along this bottom edge. This is going to be open for turning. But when I sew, I'm going to do it this way so that I can fold my lining piece out of the way because I don't want to sew through that as well. I'm going to sew up there. I'm going to fold this one out of the way. I'm going to sew down there. Hold that one, and I'm going to carry on sewing there and stop. There we go. So now we've sewn them together, we've got our turning pocket. Now, this is really important. Open your zip otherwise you won't be able to turn it there we go right now take your back piece with the flap and carefully fold this out of the way if you need to give it a little pin now this may seem fiddly diddly that's because it is i apologize you're going to line up these two top edges right side together. And then you're going to sew across the top using the seam allowance. Right. Slight afterthought, but what I'm also going to do is trim the top of my pocket because I can see that it's going to get in the way. If your fabric allows, you can press these open and that will give a nice top edge when it comes to the final construction. Unclip that one. That's the one done. This one's nice and easy. Right sides together. Match up the top edge. And sew them together across the top.
There we go. That's that one. So I folded it in half to find the center line. Then I've brought the raw edges to the center line so they meet. And I've given it another press. Now I'm going to top stitch down the long edges. And then fold my D ring on onto it, enclosing it. Now, once you've done that, you want to measure probably about three quarter of an inch down from your side seam. Just going to measure. So again, your top stitch down the long sides, then you're going to enclose it, bringing the short raw edges together, and you're going to line it up with the, the mark you made, and base stitch it in place. Now, depending on which hand you like to hold your clutch, you might want it on this side. Or if you're going to have a long strap, you can have two. Now, as I said, I'm going to use one of these because they are revolutionary. They are a bit more expensive, but I just don't like tabs sticking out. So, there we go. Right, I'm just going to move my machine out of the way for this bit. Lay them right sides together, matching the outers and the linings. Don't worry about this flap sticking out the end. We don't want to keep it folded for too long. So we're going to leave that edge till after. What I want to do is I want to match up the bottoms. And I want to open the side seams up and match them together. So open them up and match them. And then match up the bottoms. Right. So I've matched them up, matched up the bottom seams, and then I've added some extra clips in. Now I'm going to sew across the bottom, and I'm going to sew up the sides, and up the other side. I'm not going to sew the corners, I'm not going to sew these corners, and I'm not going to sew this one. So just these three for now. We're using a regular seam allowance, don't grade anything. Um, or increase any seam allowance because I've made the pieces smaller so it should be nice and easy right so I've sewn my seams things to remember though are there is a slight angle on these on the bottom edges it just makes it nicer to line up the corners that's all so I'm going to now make the corners. I find it easier to put my hand inside. And then I'm going to pinch this seam. There we go. I open up the seams and line them up as best you can. I can see already that that's getting in the way, so I'm just going to trim these points ever so slightly. I did the same on this one. Oh, yes. Right, so again, I'm going to 
join the seam on the bottom edge to the seam on the side and match them up. Now if you find your fabric likes to come, well I won't play ball, I'm just going to put some clips in the sides just to keep it all together. And I'm going to sew across here using seam allowance. I've also ran a second row of stitching just behind the first to give the faux leather a bit of stability. I'm going to do the same with the other side. Now before I do the lining, I'm going to trim some of these seams up, but not this bit. So I'm going to leave a little excess either side. I'm going to trim it to a rough quarter inch. Doesn't matter if your line is wibbly wobbly like mine, because nobody's going to see it. Right, now before I do this bottom bit I need to carefully fold my flap into my bag. I'm also going to try to keep the pocket out of the way. I'm going to clip these together. And I'm going to sew across there using seam allowance. And then I'm going to also do the corners as we did with these ones. Again, using seam allowance, but it only needs one row of stitching. You don't need a supporting stitch on these corners. I am also trimming the seam allowance on the bottom of here as well. Now with this one, it's a bit fiddlier because you have to kind of pop it open. There you go. Roll it between your fingers the best you can. And then sew across. Now I'm going to just trim these as well. So I've got my lining with box corners and I've got my outer with box corners. I'm going to reach through my turning gap and I'm going to find the flap. Pull the flap through first, followed by the rest of the bag. I'm just going to push out the corners of my outer carefully. Now if you're adding the half moon snap, don't sew this up yet. But 
I'm not, so I will. Match the folded edges. So I've got the lining of the pocket out and I'm going to match up the edges. And I'm going to sew as close to the edge as I feel happy. You can top stitch, use a top stitch width if you like, using a regular stitch length. I can push my pocket back in, push the corners out and zip it up. I'm going to roll this top edge until it looks nice and even and I'm going to clip all around. Right, so this is where it gets fun. If you have a flatbed machine and you are unable to take off this bottom bit, you'll need to stitch it, turn it so you can see, from the inside of the bag, because you can't turn it inside out because the flap's in the way. So you'll need to sew it from the inside of the bag. Now I am going to remove the baseline. Oh my gosh, that lining was so, that faux leather is so sticky, I think I should have done it from the lining, inside it from the inside, it's so sticky. Right, there we go. Right, now we're not finished yet. We still need to do the wrist strap. So I'm just going to pull that up there for a second. Oh my God. Now I've pre folded this, but yours will obviously be flat. So you're going to fold it in half to find the centre line, or if you wish, or you can measure it, especially if you're using faux leather. I'm going to bring the edges to this centre line and press again. And then I'm going to fold it once more to make the strap. Or wristlet, I should say. And I'm going to put this on top. Thread this through. Then... I'm going to open up the ends of my wristlet strap, which obviously won't stay open. Without twisting, without folding, I'm going to bring these together. So short, raw ends together. So my battery died then but what I've done is I've sewn them together using seam allowance. Now it's time to refold the wristlets. So I'm going to open up these seams. I don't want to iron it because I don't want to lose the creases. There we go. 
Now what you're going to do now is top stitch one side all the way around, move in the hook as you go, and then turn it around and I'm going to top stitch the other side. Right, the fingers crossed. Ooh, the one's lucky. There are no twists. Now I'm going to move the bulky part of the seam down towards my hook. And I'm going to stitch together as close as you're happy with to the snap. If you've got a zipper foot, you could probably get quite close, but it doesn't necessarily need to be too close. It's just to stop this from moving anywhere. And there we go. Now I need to add I'd lost the screws then. For this I'm going to use an awl which is a nice sharp pokey tool. So from the back view there we go. Now I need to add I'd lost the screws then. For this I'm going to use an awl which is a nice sharp pokey tool. So from the back view, right, I've given my seam a little hammer. There we go, nicely done. And I'm going to put this as far to the one side as it will fit comfortably. Obviously when the bag's shut. Yeah. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my awl to pop holes. Now if you need to, you can run a small bit of glue to find my holes again. Yeah. Oops, a daisy. Some of these have teeny tiny screws and some of them have bigger screws. And I have lost my good screwdriver. Right, there we go. So I've screwed them in. And then all I need to do is clip that on. And you can see what I mean by it's hidden. So only the D-ring pops out the side, which is why I like them so much. And there we have it. If you are going to add the half moon snap, just stay put and I will show you the quick how to of that in just a moment. So this is just a quick visual guide of what's on page 20 of your pattern. Now this is one I've completed in fully faux leather. I've done it to what my my personal machine can handle but I think it'll look really nice finished with one of these snaps. So this is your front and then this is the back. 
depending on who you are where you get it from they might have their own guide on how to install it and I really suggest I recommend you looking them up so on your finished flap you're going to find the center to pop on your half moon snap I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you want, you can add a small bit of glue, but I would say a small bit because it does come out the sides. And obviously, especially if you're using faux leather, once it's glued, that's that. It's a bit of a mess. So then I'm going to turn over and I put my all away. I'm going to use my awl again to mark pipe towels for my screws because these screws are so tiny it's really easy to strip the heads on them. Whoop. When I'm doing my normally, I like to dip the end of the screw in a little bit of glue, put a bit of glue on a scrap and dip the screw in before putting it in there. That's just me. So then what you're going to do is you're going to close your flap of your bag to where it feels comfortable. I mean, don't stretch it. You don't want it up here. And then you're going to mark where you see the snap touches the bag now i've cheated a little bit and i've already marked mine but you take your pen have a look and mark it like so and you'll take the center and make sure that the center of your snap is in line if you've marked over here or over here just move it along a bit so that it is in the center because chances are it's just been folded folded over at a bit of an angle so make sure your washer is in line with your stitches and mark your prongs use your seam ripper again to cut the holes We're pushing this through you're going to reach it through the pocket you can see the prongs put your washer over now for a small bag there is quite a generous sized pocket so there is lots of room to get your hands in and I'm going to cover with a bit of duct tape to protect the lining now you can go ahead now and sew your pocket together and add on your side connector. Oh, nice side. There you have it. If you need any more information or help, please do pop me a message. But have a look at page 20 to find out all the bits in the pattern that you need to miss out but they are written in the pattern as well so there you go